suspense. This is the man in black. Here again to introduce Columbia's program, Suspense. Two of Hollywood's most deft players are with us tonight. Miss Geraldine Fitzgerald and Sir Cedric Hardwick. Miss Fitzgerald and Sir Cedric are here to match wits in a suspenseful tale by John Dixon Carr called Will You Walk Into My Parlor? If you've been with us on these Tuesday nights, you will know that suspense is compounded of mystery and suspicion and dangerous adventure. In this series are tales calculated to intrigue you, to stir your nerves, to offer you a precarious situation, and then withhold the solution until the last possible moment. And so with Will You Walk Into My Parlor and the performances of Geraldine Fitzgerald and Sir Cedric Hardwick, we again hope to keep you in suspense. Just how far does any man trust his wife or his fiancée either, for that matter? <laughs> An English bazaar, a garden party in the grounds of Leighton Hall in Kent, one fine summer afternoon before the war. Leighton Hall is the home of Major and Mrs. Grant, always ready in the cause of charity. There's the stern red brick of the hall rising above oak trees, against green lawns of the stalls and the swings and the roundabouts and the coconut shies. They are not well patronized now, because a summer storm is coming up and the wind is whipping at the tent flapping the gaudy banners in a fantastic manner and sending the spectators hurrying away in search of shelter. But over in a far corner is the fortune teller's tent, gaudy in purple and gold, yet with more than just a suggestion of mystery. Beside it is a miniature shooting gallery, presided over by Major Grant himself. Near the center of the bazaar is the bandstand, where the village musicians play lustily to keep the patronizers from leaving. But as the wind rises... It seems that only two of them are oblivious to the coming storm, for they are in love. The young man is tall, in sport coat and flannels. The young lady, in a flowing gown of a startling beauty which suggests a halo, a startling beauty that glows against the gray of the sky and the paint of the tents. She has her hand on his arm for protection. Against what, you ask? Nothing. Just... For protection. Philip, darling, I want to get my fortune told before we leave. Mary, the wind, I'm sure, is going to pour any minute. I oh, think... it won't take long. We'll beat the storm. Wait and see. I hate to drag you away from the match, but I do want to visit him. You don't believe in that rubbish, do you, Mary? No, I don't suppose I do. But I never can resist getting my fortune told. Well, <laughs> I suppose it's a woman's prerogative. And they say this man is all very good. They say it's marvelous how he can tell you all about yourself. But you know that already, don't you? Oh, Phil, darling, please don't be so unimaginative. <laughs> all right, Mary, I'll be good. Um... Who is the fortune teller, by the way? There's his sign on the tent, the great Omar, Palmerston and Crystal Gazer, sees all, knows all. No, I mean, who is he in real life, friend of the Major's? Maybe the Major could tell us. There he is now. Oh, hey, you two. Over here. Oh, Major. Please, Phil, we don't, we don't have to go there, do we? Go where? To that shooting range of the Major's. I hate guns. <laughs> it's right next to the fortune teller's tent, Mary, and we can't insult our host. <laughs> Coming, Major. <laughs> Look at the Major. He's beaming all over his face and twisting that white mustache into a corkscrew. I suppose he's heard about us. Mary, my very contrary one. You're not ashamed of being engaged to me, are you? Oh, you know it's nothing like that, Phil. I'm much too much in love with you. Only all the old cats in the village are probably saying awful things about me. Now, what the devil could they be saying about Mary you? Mary <laughs> Sherwood, Phil Lester. Hello, How Major Grant. Oh, you young rascals, you young so-and-sos. Give me a hand, each of you, and many congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Major. We um, feel rather pleased about it ourselves. At least I do. And you, young woman, you come over here, and then you have every one of us Britishers at your feet. What do you do but snare a fellow American when he's helpless and away from home? <laughs> and do I yeah. love being snared? <laughs> yes, old girl, it looks as though you had your man where you wanted him. <laughs> now tell me your secret. Are you a demon in disguise? Please, Major Grant. It's an awfully good disguise, if she is. Please, Major. Please, Phil. Why, uh, 
Well, is anything wrong? No, nothing, but it's getting dark and the wind's rising. It's going to pour any minute now. Oh, a moment before you were the one who said not to worry. Oh, that won't matter, my girl. The show's nearly over anyway. We did pretty well, if I do say so myself. We came over here really to see the fortune teller. If you don't mind letting go of my hand. No, you don't, my girl. Not a bit of it. You won't let me go? <laughs> not until you patronize this charity. As a preparation of polishing off your husband after marriage, why not try a few rounds with a rifle? Show us what kind of a shot you are. <laughs> no, please. No, no, no. Here's a neat little model. Winchester 61. 22 caliber. Yeah, try it. I know it's stupid and silly of me, and it's, it's not the rifle, really. It's, it's anything to do with death. Death? I mean, anything that suggests death. Ever since I was a child, I've never even been able to look at a dead person in a coffin. It, it scares me. Oh, Mary, a dead person? Nobody's going to get killed, darling. You just fire away and see if you can hit the target. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, if you insist, I... Hey, watch out! <laughs> Bullseye, you've hit the electric light in the roof. <laughs> You're not supposed to aim at oh, that. I'm so sorry, yeah, look I... here, speaking of dying, if that's your style of target shooting, Don, if I'm not going to crawl out from under this counter and stand behind her, here, yeah, make way. <laughs> it isn't funny, Phil. I'm sorry, but I, I can't go on with this. Here's the rifle. All right, here I Sorry, Mary, if I'd known it was going to affect you like this, I... Oh, it's all right. I tell you what, you run along and see the fortune teller, my dear. Come with me, Phil, won't you? He'll only admit one at a time. Well, why don't you go ahead, darling? I'll, I'll wait for you here. All right, dear. You know, Major, I... I am an idiot for upsetting her. You're a very lucky young fellow, my lad. I hope you realize that. Oh, I realize it, all right. I, um, hope this fortune teller doesn't keep her in there very long. Yeah? Why? Look at the sky. It's getting black as pitch. If you're not careful, this wind is going to blow all your tents into the next county. Oh, well, these tents are pretty securely pegged, young fellow. I think we can risk it. It's so dark that... Wait a minute. Look there. Yeah, where? The fortune teller's tent. He's got a light inside, and you can see his shadow against the tent. It's like a shadow screen. Looks at... There's Mary going in. Now she's sitting down across the table from him. I say, young He's... fellow, do you happen to know who the fortune teller really is? No, as a matter of fact, I was going to ask you. <laughs> well, I'll tell you a little secret. He's a detective inspector from Scotland Yard. A, a what? A detective inspector from Scotland Yard. He came down here on business, forged half crowns or something. So the chief constable and I asked him to do our, be our fortune teller. He's one of these glittering-eyed blokes, and in a turban with brown paint on his face. Does he know anything about palmistry? No, no, but he knows a lot about human nature. That, my lad, is Inspector Brandon. He's a specialist in poison cases. They say he never forgets a face. Wait a minute. Why, uh, is anything wrong? What's he saying to Mary? Look at those shadows. Mary's jumped up and backed away. He, he's pointing his finger at her. Now she's backing out of the tent. Look, Major, he's following her. Can you hear what he's saying? Remember, my dear, ashes to ashes and dust to dust. No, no. Ashes to ashes and dust to dust. <laughs> Mary, darling, get hold of yourself. Mary... Darling, you shouldn't get all upset over that fortune-telling lingo. What's wrong with you? What was he saying to you? Saying to me? Nothing at all, really. Only the usual thing about a happy life and a little illness, but nothing serious. And then why were you so frightened? Frightened? <laughs> but I wasn't frightened. Oh, no, Mary, I'm sorry. I saw your shadow on the wall of that tent, and I heard you shrieking... I think I'll go in and get my fortune told and see what all this is about. Phil, you mustn't. Why not? I, uh, I felt a drop of rain on my head. It's going to pour down in a second. Hadn't we better run for the house? Well, you go on up to the house, Mary. Oh, Phil, I don't want to be by myself. All right, then, dear. There's the major. Here, give him this gun, will you? I'll be with you in a moment. I'm going to see that faker. Fortune teller. May I come in? You may. Please to enter. Thank you. Sit down in the chair opposite to me. First, tell me the date of your birth. 
Then look at the crystal on the table in front of you. Just a minute, Inspector Brandon. Do you mind if we drop the mumbo-jumbo? Well, as a matter of fact, I'd like to drop it. It's been a bit of a strain talking like Hamlet's ghost. <laughs> well, 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 what's on your mind? Well, maybe it's only the heat or my own nerves, but... What were you saying to Miss Sherwood? Miss... Miss who? The young lady who was just in here, my fiancée. What's wrong? How did you jump like that? Did you say fiancée? Yes, of course, why not? Now, look here, Mr... Oh, um, my name is Lester. Philip Lester. And what did you say her name is? Mary Sherwood. Here, what's all this mystery? Tell me, Mr. Lester. Does she live here in the village for very long? No, only about six months. And how long have you been engaged to her? Believe me, I have a reason for asking that. How long have you been engaged? Well, it'll be a week tomorrow, but... A week tomorrow? Hmm... Has she by any chance invited you to dinner at her house tomorrow night? Dinner? Has I... she? Yes, as a matter of fact, she has, but I don't see... You know who this Mary Sherwood really is? No? Well, I'll tell you, she's... Inspector Brandon! Ah! Never stand with your shadow against the light. You're hit! Mr. Here's her, let Brandon, me... I'm terribly sorry, but Phil shouldn't have given me this dreadful rifle to hold. All I did was touch the trigger by accident. I... I hope I haven't hit anything. In the quiet village of Sutton, later that same night, after the unfortunate accident that couldn't be helped, a rather white-faced young man, Philip Lester, slips down the road, pauses in front of the door to the inn, starts to enter, and then changes his mind. He looks over his shoulder and then walks around the building, being very careful to stay within its shadow. He slips in through the side door and makes sure that no one sees him as he makes his way quietly up the stairs to a darkened passageway outside the bedrooms. Glances at the number on the first door and then hurries down the hall. Stops in front of room 27. Yes? Come in. Inspector Brandon, I... Why, I thought... Close it quickly. Yes, sir. You... You're sitting up. And taking nourishment, thank you. Oh, excuse me, Inspector, but I heard you were still unconscious and not expected to live. So... Yes, that was the report that I asked Dr. Stiles to give out. But why? I had my reasons, Mr. Lester. As you can see, fortunately, I was the recipient of only a flesh wound across the left shoulder. It, it bled a little, but not much. Then, well, Inspector, poor Mary is nearly frantic. She thinks she's killed you. Let me ring her up and... Stay away from that telephone. Why? Because... Because I want to tell you a few things about Miss Mary Sherwood... In the first place, she isn't a miss. She's, uh, she's had three husbands already. What? All of whom died a violent death by poisoning. What are you trying to tell me? Now, just a moment before you lose your temper. Three husbands and one fiancé whom she didn't bother to marry. First, the fiancé. They made mutual wills in each other's favor. Exactly a week after the engagement, following dinner at her house, this fellow was taken ill. Ah, uh, he died before morning in titanic convulsion. Inspector, that's ridiculous. Mary, why, she's so young and innocent. Young, perhaps, but... Uh, I don't believe it. Don't take my word for it. I've sent Sergeant Lambert to London for the file. You can see photographs and fingerprints. I still don't believe it. Then tell me, Mr. Lester. You're quite a wealthy man, aren't you? Yes, I'm fairly well off. Have you and this woman made a will in each other's favor? Mary wouldn't need to do that. She's got plenty of money and a collection of jewels worth I don't know how much. I quite agree, but you haven't answered my question. Have you made a will in each other's favor? Uh, yes. Well, whose suggestion was that? Yours or hers? I don't remember. We started talking and agreed it would be a sensible idea. But it shocked you a little, didn't it? Now, you wondered why it was necessary. Inspector. A minute ago, you were talking about photographs and fingerprints. Well? You don't mean Mary's been on trial. She has been on trial three times. Yes, three times, and under three different names. But she was acquitted. Yes, because she had a cast-iron alibi. There, you see. Wait. She was acquitted simply because the prosecution couldn't show how the poison was administered. 